okay, this is 2.1, and we're going to be dealing with bar graphs. So what we're going to do is we're going to interpret a bar graph, and then we're going to draw a bar graph. Okay, so we know what bar graphs look like. This is a bar graph right here. Over here on the right is a circle graph. So let's compare these graphs. Each graph has how many categories? Well, I can see 1, 2, 3 here, and 1, 2, 3 there, A, B, and C. Is it possible that both graphs show the same data? Well, let's look at the frequency um, for A, B, and C. So B has the most here. So do, over here, does B show the most? And I think it does. Uh, C has the next highest. And is C, the area of C here, larger than A? Yes, it is. So I would say that the answer would be yes. They both possibly could show the same data, OK, when you compare them. All right. so. We have a bar graph right here. This looks like a double bar graph. Let's look at the title. It says, Problem Bears in a District in British Columbia. On the bottom horizontal axis, we've got the years from 1992 up to 2001. On the vertical axis, we have the number of bears. And then you can see it being a double bar graph showing this color right here, the light shaded color, as being number of grizzly bears being a problem and the dark one being black bears. Okay. All right, so Amy is a conservation officer. She educates people about problem bears. These are bears close to food in populated areas. What information can Amy get from this graph? So we're going to look at this graph and what can she get? Well, we know that we're talking about the years of 1992 to 2001. Okay. We're talking about kinds of bears, grizzly bear and black bear, and we're talking about how many of them were problems. So. What could she get? Well, she could get the number of problem bears of a species, species being black or grizzly, of a species from 1992 to 2001. So that's what she could get from the graph. Okay? So describe the data in this double bar graph. The categories on the horizontal axis are, well, the years and the type of bear. So you can say it's years, year, and the type of bear. That's from the horizontal axis. The two groups of data are the year and over here, this is the year, and the number of bears. That symbol means number, number of bears. Okay. Okay. Describe the trend. Well, what is the trend? Trend is just a relationship between the two variables. So describe the trend. As the years increased, so as we're going from 1992 up, as the years increased, the number of problem back black bears, black bears is the dark, looks like the number increased until 1995. So we'll go to 1995. Looks like it peaked there, then starts to go down. So number of black bears increased. We're reading the graph. Then it looks like it went down and decreased until it hit this year here. It went down, and then it, all of a sudden it goes back up again. And then it decreased, except for, looks like 1999 to 2000, except for 1999 to 2000. Looks like it peaked a bit, went up again, and then starts to go back down. Okay. What is the range for each of these? Well, let's look at what the definition of range is. The range is just the difference between the greatest and the least number in a data set. So we're talking about black bears. So let's go back to the graph. And right here it gives us the number 20. So let's look and see. There's our black black bears right here. And you can see that it sure is 20. And what's our lowest number? Our lowest number seems to be down here, there and there. And that, if we go across, that reads a 5. So it looks like 20 subtract 5, so our range is 15. Problem grizzly bears. Well, we know it goes down to 1 because they're telling us it goes down to 1. Looks like it's right here. 
Now, what is the highest number of grizzly bears? Well, we're going to have to interpret a little bit. This is 30. That's 35. So I'd say it's probably about 32. Some might say 31. Some might say 33. But I'm just going to say 32. Okay? It's just a matter of interpretation, which means it gives us a range of 31. So circle the correct word. The greater range means that the number of problem grizzly bears changed more or less than that of the black bears. Higher number here, it means it changed more. Okay? All right. Second example. Looks like we're going to have to draw one here. Draw a bar graph. Okay, so you're going to need maybe some colored pens, a ruler. Okay, you want to draw bar graphs as accurately and as neatly as possible so that people who are reading them can interpret them properly. So councils in two British Columbia towns conducted a survey. They wanted to choose three ways to protect the bears and keep communities safe. The results are shown in the chart. What decision might they make from the data? So we've got two towns. They came up with looks like one, two, three, four, five, six possible suggestions or solutions, and then they voted on them. Okay. So we could ask the question, what, can, what decisions might they make from the data? Well, they're gonna, the decisions they're going to make are they're going to probably choose the best, maybe two or three of the best answers here to uh, possibly come up with as a way to control um, the number of bears in the town, okay, and human contact. So solution, what is the maximum number of votes in a category? Use the maximum number of votes to help you choose a scale for the horizontal axis because what we've got over here on the right-hand side is we've got just a blank graph and we have to draw the bar graph ourselves. So we have to choose a scale. Well, the way you choose a scale is you know that it starts at zero right here on the bottom. And what is the largest number of votes? Well, we look at these numbers here. We can see the largest is just over a thousand. So that means we want our scale to go from zero at least to a thousand and use up the entire bottom part of the graph. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. If I make each one of these one hundred, that'll make this one one thousand right here. That'll make this eight hundred. This one will be six hundred people. This one will be four hundred. And this one will be two hundred. Okay? Okay, so draw and label. That says record the scale on the graph, so we've done that. Draw and label the bars for each town along the vertical axis. Shade to show the town for each bar. Use a legend to show which bars give the data for each town. So we're going to make a double bar graph just like the previous one. I have to have a legend. So what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to make my legend like this. I'm going to say that when it's colored in, that's going to be town one and over here I'm just maybe put lines in there and I'm gonna say that is town two okay so what I need to do is maybe leave a space here and I'm gonna start with my first category and my first category looks like use safe electric fence around the landfill okay and town one had 1020 and town two had 711 so I'll start with town one so I'm going to go all the way from zero up to where I think 1,020 is. So it's going to be just a little past there. It's going to go up like this. And then I'm going to go try to make it as neat as possible. And then this one, I'm going to shade in like this, color it in. And then town two was 711. So I'm going to go like this to 711, which is about right there. And then that was striped. So, but I have to tell the person who's reading this what this represents, and that was use safe electric fences around the landfill. So we'll just say electric fence, electric fence around the landfill, landfill. Okay. So we'll go to the next one. I'll do two of them. This next one was remove brush in town. Okay, so town one was 294, town two was 47. So remove brush in town, 294. So I'm going to leave another space again. 
and I go 294, so that's almost 300. So about there. It's town one, so I'm going to color that in. And town two was 47, so there's 100. Halfway is 50, so it's just around halfway there. Okay, and that was striped. So this was remove brush in town. Remove brush in town. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to label this as neatly as you can. You want to draw it as neatly as you can. It's very difficult for me to do it with this pen on here, but if you've got a ruler and colored pencils and you print neatly, you can make a really nice bar graph. Okay. Okay, so it says complete the bar graph, the double bar graph. I just did two categories, you can do them all. Mark the top three choices for town one with a check mark like this, and then mark the top three choices for town two with an asterisk like that. So let's go back up to here. Let's mark our top three choices for town one. Well, that'll be just the frequency. So 1,020, looks like 948 might be the next one, and then looks like 773 would be the top three choices for town one. Town two, the highest one is 711, so we'll mark that with an asterisk. Looks like it might be 710, and it looks like 518. Okay, so we've marked the top three choices for each town. What two choices would you suggest? Well, we want them to be the same, so which which ones of these choices have an asterisk and a check mark beside them? It looks like the electric fence at the landfill, and it looks like put out garbage on pickup day only, those two. So it might be that one and that one would be my two choices. So electric fence around the landfill and pick up and put garbage out on garbage day only. Okay, so that's what you'd write down. Electric fence. And the second one would be garbage out on garbage day only. Okay, so when you're drawing a bar graph, and you're going to have to do some practice with that, don't forget to put a title on here. Okay, so we could call this, label this uh, title maybe um, Bear Solutions. Okay, we've got a legend down here showing town one, town two. We've got a label for uh, what the categories are, and then we've got the number of people that voted for them down here. So we'd have to maybe put people, votes, because they voted on here, and over here we might write categories, something like this. Categories or suggestions. Okay. All right. So that's one point or two point one on bar graphs. Go ahead and try the practice. On the practice, you're going to have to interpret some bar graphs and maybe draw uh, one or two. Okay. So go ahead and do that.